Hello, I am Miriam Bear from Keto Chow. I'm Chris Bear. And today we're going to talk about our electrolyte powder drink mix, Salty. Ooh, Salty. Let's talk about why we made Salty, what's in it, all the salty stuff. Tell us really quickly why we created Salty. The main reason we made Salty was because all the other electrolytes that are out there, they don't taste the way that, well, personally, I want them to taste. So, most electrolytes are designed to be put in a lot of water. Right. Not quite that much. That's a bit <laughs> this preposterous. This is an over-exaggeration. That is an over-exaggeration. I wanted electrolytes that would fit into a regular 16-ounce water bottle or 500 milliliters if you're a Canadian or whatever. Yeah. But because the, the other stuff, it's too strong. Yeah. The flavors are just really, really powerful. And a lot of people interpret that as being really salty when it's not. It's actually it's just, really sweet. It's too much sweetener, it's too much flavor, and it's too much citric acid. Okay. So I wanted something that was better suited for this. So when we created Salty, it was designed to just rip open one of these packets, put it into here, and you're ready to go. Now you can put it into more water, but that was the main thing. We also wanted to make something that had absolutely no maltodextrin. Right which most of the electrolytes that are out there, including some well-known ones that are very popular in the low-carb carnivore keto space, mm -hmm. they actually do use maltodextrin. They're hiding it under natural flavors, but we wanted something that had no maltodextrin whatsoever. Yeah, and what he means by hiding it under natural flavors is if it's under a certain percentage, then it technically can be put under natural flavors. And what they're using maltodextrin on is to dry the liquid into a powdered form. And the reason why they use maltodextrin is because it's very easy, manufacturers have it, and it's cheap. What we're using is acacia gum fiber. So we, we still have to dry the liquid into a powder, and what we've chosen to do is use the acacia gum fiber because we believe that it's better for us. Now, regarding maltodextrin, the reason why we don't want to include that at all is maltodextrin is, when it really gets down to it, it's chains of glucose. Mm -hmm. When it hits your saliva, even, it splits apart and it turns into sugar. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people who have really bad reactions to maltodextrin, even when it's a very small amount. But regardless, in a lot of cases, it will raise people's blood sugar. Yeah. Um, people who are type 1 or type 2 diabetic have to be very careful about products that have maltodextrin, even though it is technically classified as sugar-free. Right. Because it's not a sugar, it's a starch, even though it breaks apart immediately in the sugar. Um, a, lot of, a lot of products will be labeled sugar-free, but will have maltodextrin. Yeah. We didn't want any of that. Yeah. So we, we had to make sure that the, the, the flavors didn't have any maltodextrin. And to be fair to the other companies, the maltodextrin amount that's in those products is very, very small, and you may not have a reaction to it at all. But it's a principle with us that we never want to use it regardless of how little it is. And so it's just something we've tried to stand by. Okay, we actually had a bunch of people. We were at a trade show this weekend, and I had people come up to me, and they're like, what? Why do I need this? Why do I need electrolytes? Oh, yeah. I thought that was an interesting question, because don't we all know that we need electrolytes, right? <laughs> so electrolytes are super important, mm -hmm. because there are so many different processes in the body that require electrolytes. Right. It's actually how your nerves talk to your muscles to both contract and to relax. And yeah. different electrolytes are used for different things. Like sodium and potassium are usually used for the contraction. And if you don't have enough magnesium, then you end up with cramps because it doesn't tell it to relax. Right. So you need a good mixture of all of them. The most important one is going to be sodium. Um, sodium is kind of the king. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, it's the easiest one to get. Right. But potassium and magnesium are also super important they're quite a bit more difficult to get good quality sources of those. Mm -hmm. So that's actually why we have those bumped up a bit in, in Salty. Okay. Um, I did uh, have a thought too. I have heard that uh, the soil has been de depleted of its minerals. Mm -hmm. And so even though we think we're getting our uh, minerals from the meat we eat and other things, if they're not getting as much minerals as they have in the past, then we're also not getting 
as much minerals. Yeah, so for example, um, lots of people talk about bananas or avocados having a lot of potassium. Yeah. Well, they, I'm sure they did back in the 1950s when right. those tests were done. Nowadays, the concentrations of those minerals is not quite so high. So you have to add stuff to the soil in order to have that there. Right. Or you can use a supplement like, like Salty, which has them as well. Okay. Uh, another thing I've actually heard Dr. Barry refer to quite a few times is that if you do a blood level of your sodium, magnesium, and potassium, typically it's not going to be um, low unless you're severely depleted. And so a lot of times you'll have regular levels that mm -hmm. uh, just the blood test, in yeah. the blood test and it will look regular and normal, but that doesn't mean that they're actually normal. They could be, it could be pulling magnesium, potassium, and sodium bones. from your bones to make those um, levels right because your body is is very highly regulated and it really wants to take care of itself mm -hmm. so i thought that was really interesting that he had brought that up so let's talk about some of the benefits of electrolytes well number one one of the easiest ways to tell if you're low on electrolytes is you'll yeah. probably have a headache yeah that's like the first thing <laughs> yeah. um, and that means you're usually low on potassium and maybe sodium, and actually magnesium too. They kind of all three do that. Um, too mu not enough magnesium, you'll probably end up with muscle cramps. Yeah. Um, now the interesting thing is it's, it's actually a little bit difficult to have too much of the electrolytes. Right. What'll usually happen is if you get too much, your body knows how to handle that. Mm -hmm. You just sweat it or urinate it out. Right. Okay, so here's a good question. What are the amounts and types of minerals in our electrolytes? Okay, that's very good. We're using, well, sodium chloride is salt. Yes. Uh, any, any salt is sodium chloride, whether it's pink Himalayan salt, whether it's mined on the moon, right. it's going to be sodium chloride. I don't think it could be mined on the moon. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but still. <laughs> It's just sodium chloride. That's the chemical name, and it's the right. form of sodium. Sodium plus chlorine. Um, for the potassium, we're using potassium chloride, and the magnesium that we're using is actually just naturally occurring mm -hmm. magnesium chloride that is bundled in with the sodium chloride. Yeah. We're not getting a separate source. We're not synthesizing a uh, magnesium plus a, an amino acid. We're just using the stuff that would naturally occur in nature. Right. Um, that's what we're using. We have around 1,000 milligrams of sodium. It's around 400 milligrams of potassium, and that's, that's per packet. Right. Um, and then it's, I think, 180 so odd milligrams of magnesium in each one, which is a significant amount of magnesium. It's around half of your recommended daily allowance. Mm -hmm which is pretty remarkable. There aren't a lot of um, supplements out there that have that much magnesium in them. And it's cool that it's just coming along for the ride with our salt source. When comparing Salty with our leading competitors, we have an equivalent amount of sodium. But where the biggest differences lie will be in the amounts of potassium and magnesium, where we have two and three times the amount of our competitors, respectively. But what about Gatorade and other popular sports drinks? They have some sodium, yes, but not nearly as much as you actually need. With potassium, there's an even greater difference, and even more so when it comes to magnesium. Then we have to talk about sugar. Salty is completely sugar-free, but Gatorade, it's not even close. There's so much sugar that I'm actually ready out of space here. Hey, 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 what? Wait, hey, please stop. There, geez, oh no, and, and I'm gone. Okay, that's awesome. Um, can I ask a follow-up question? I yeah. had somebody this weekend saying, oh, you have chloride in there. Chloride's, chloride's bad for me. Can you speak to that a little bit? So when you make a salt like sodium chloride, it is using chlorine, but that's not chlorine gas or chlorine like in a pool. Yeah it's bound to that metal to create a salt. And it's actually part of our body's process that it needs that chloride yeah. in order to make things like hydrochloric acid for our stomach. And um, something our body is doing all by itself. Yes, and the chlorine in sodium chloride and potassium chloride, and then for that matter in magnesium chloride, it is an electrolyte and it's right. part of what our body needs. So it's. <laughs> It's something that you want, even if you're like, what is I'm that I'm not stuff? sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for answering that. Here's another customer question. Noreen asks, I really want to try these, but isn't that sodium amount really high? So that's based on old information. 
The current research shows that we need a lot more electrolytes mm -hmm. than we thought that we need, specifically salt. Yeah. Um, there, a lot of people, they tend to have high blood pressure because they don't have enough salt. And if you're relying on research from 50 years ago and ignoring the current yeah. information, then yeah, you may think that's too much salt. But here's the cool thing. Your taste buds are gonna moderate how much you drink. And you can mix up a thing of salty in the water. If it tastes good to you, you probably need those electrolytes. Your body is going to recognize that and it's going to taste good. And if you're like, oh, I don't know if I need that much, you don't have to drink a full one. Mm -hmm. You can mix this up, drink half of it, save it for later. Um, I actually keep a 32 ounce water bottle with two of these in it on my nightstand. If I wake up in the middle of the night and I have a headache or I have cramps, I can down some electrolytes, go back to sleep, and it's fine. Yeah. Well, the thing is you really want to stay on top of it before you get the cramps or the headache. Yeah. And one thing I noticed on my keto journey is I have a lipedema and lymphedema in my legs, and if I supplement more salt than I think I need, I have less swelling, which mm. seems so backwards because yeah. you think, well, you're retaining swell and that's why you're swelling or part of why you're swelling. But for some reason, when I have enough salt or more salt than I think I need, the swelling is better. So that's just so interesting. It's all about trying to figure out what works for you and, and just playing with it until you can figure out what your body wants and needs. So Miriam, there are lots of different types of magnesium. But why did we go with magnesium chloride? Like, that's kind of a weird choice. Because it's in the solar CAC. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's really it. It came along with the salt. Yeah. Now, there are lots of different types of magnesium. Some are super effective and some are kind of junk, like magnesium oxide. It's essentially white paint. Yeah. Us humans, we can't really use it. And the reason why magnesium always is bound to something is because it can't exist alone in a form that we can take. Yeah, I mean, right? take a, a big chunk of magnesium and chew on it. You're not going to get anything from that, aside right. from your fillings are going to be really weird. But and So it's attached to an amino acid. Or a chloride okay. or a citrate. Okay. It has to be attached to something that our body can break apart and then use that because we have so many different processes in our cells that need magnesium, but elemental magnesium, yeah. we just can't access. Something, it either needs to be worn down through erosion and then mm -hmm. bound to a chloride, or it needs to be in a lab bound to an amino acid that mm -hmm. you can break off. One pretty common magnesium is magnesium malate, mm -hmm. which is using malic acid and hooking that onto the magnesium, and then our bodies can break that apart and it's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, different types of magnesium. I really like ours because it's, it's super effective and it's, it's not white paint that is completely useless. Cool. We get this question a lot. Crystal's asking, is there citric acid in these electrolytes? So simply put, no. We use something else instead. Now, why that's relevant is kind of interesting. So citric acid either comes from fruit peels mm -hmm. or you can take glucose and run it through an enzymatic reaction using single cell organisms. Mm -hmm. The sensationalist headlines are citric acid is made by black mold from corn syrup. Okay. Oh, yep, 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 yep. That's definitely some black mold, but uh, you don't really want to get rid of that because we're just going to turn that into citric acid. And that <laughs> is very bad. Well, it's... It gets a lot of people very excited about it. We didn't want to deal with that entirely, so we just chose a different ingredient. We chose malic acid instead, which as far as we can tell has no controversy. There's no contraindications. Malic acid just seems to be fine. In fact, malic acid is what's used to create magnesium malate. Hmm. So you take elemental magnesium, you mix it up with malic acid, and you make magnesium malate. Okay. Everybody likes magnesium malate, and it's just malic acid and magnesium. We figured that to enhance the flavor and give it that, 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 tartness. Yeah, that tartness, that we would use malic acid instead of citric acid, and we wouldn't have to worry about whether or not there was citric acid at all. And they taste quite similar. <laughs> Strangely enough, the malic acid has a stronger 
the tartness, mm -hmm. and so we can actually use less of it. Oh, that's nice. So it's actually a better ingredient overall. Cool. So that's why we chose it. Okay, Angie's asking this question. I hear that malic acid could have MSG in it. Is that true? Put simply, no. Okay. Um, monosodium glutinate is never in malic acid. Malic acid is a single molecule. Um, now, some companies will include monosodium glutinate in natural flavors, okay. but that would be more of a savory product. I've never, I've, I've honestly never heard of anyone putting MSG in something that's meant to be sweet, okay. which the salty electrolytes, well, except for the clean slate, the unflavored one, are all a, they're, they're sweetened. So we wouldn't use it, yeah. and malic acid does not have MSG. Okay, will you tell me about the different stevia that we're using? Yeah, so a lot of people, their experience with stevia is the old stuff that's like, you extract it from the leaf, it's very bitter. Um, if you have an allergy to ragweed, it may trigger that because right. they're kind of from the same family. That's the old stevia. The new stuff is they actually take some of the stuff from stevia, they run it through an enzyme and it cleans it up and you, you end up with just the components. It's Reb B and Reb D. Uh, I, I won't bore you with the technical details, but it's a very clean flavor that doesn't have the bitter notes that have plagued stevia in the past. The stuff that we're using is remarkably different. And even our friends who are like, oh, stevia, yuck, have found that what we're using in Salty is so clean with the sweetness that it doesn't bother them at all. Um, stevia is remarkable in that it does not impact blood sugar at all. It doesn't trigger an insulin response mm -hmm. and is just super awesome in so many ways and completely different from the stevia of yesteryear. Let's ask our viewers to put in the comments if they've had a problem with stevia in the past and do they have a problem with our stevia because we would like to know. Helen asked, natural flavors, what does that mean? Natural flavors just means simply that it's derived from oils and other compounds that occur naturally, as opposed to being synthesized in a lab. The issue with natural flavors, where people get hung up on natural flavors, is a lot of companies will use the catch-all of natural flavors to include ingredients that they don't want to divulge because they could be controversial. Things like maltodextrin. Right. Um, when you're creating a flavor, it's a liquid. It starts off as a liquid, always. You have to make that into a powder if you want to use it in a powdered thing, such as the salty electrolytes. Well, in order to do that, you have to use something like maltodextrin. So commonly in the industry, what they will use to make a liquid into a powder is maltodextrin. And maltodextrin is super easy to use, it's very cheap, it's inexpensive, but it causes problems for a lot of people. And really the only other alternative that works well is acacia gum. And some people are like, oh, I don't want any gums. And I can understand that. But again, the alternative, there's really only one other alternative. That's maltodextrin. The cool thing about acacia gum is it turns into butyrate in your gut. And so you don't even digest it the same way you would maltodextrin, for instance. The bacteria in your intestine will actually break it down into fats, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. And it acts as an emulsifier, which allows you to, say, if you're doing the Coco Loco, and you do it with hot water, mm -hmm. you can actually mix some butter in there and it'll mix in pretty well because of the acacia gum. Okay, lightning round questions. How much sugar is in one serving? None, there is zero. There are some carbohydrates from the acacia gum, but you do not digest them, zero sugar. Zero. Are these free of dyes? Yes, we decided we didn't need to put any colors or dyes in there. You can add them if you really want to, but now the Coco Loco, it mixes up brown because it's got actual cocoa powder. What? But that's it. Okay, is this product kosher certified? Yes, it is. Um, we did get the kosher certification after a lot of our packaging was already printed. Mm -hmm. So depending on which batch you get, it may or may not have the kosher on there. But on our website, we have the actual certification from uh, one of the certifiers in Denver, um, Scroll K. Okay, cool. 
Are these good for you even though you're not strict low carb? Absolutely. So every human needs electrolytes. We cannot synthesize electrolytes. We have to get them from somewhere else. So if you're a human and you're alive, you need electrolytes. Whether you're a mom driving to a soccer game, whether you're a kid playing lacrosse, whether you are an older person who is, I don't know. Upstairs. Yeah, or you're just waking up in the night and you need some, you're getting cramps and stuff like that. Everybody needs electrolytes. This is suitable for everyone. Nice. Does salty break a fast? Some people are going to have a different reaction to flavoring and sweetener than other people. Um, we do have the clean slate, which guaranteed is not going to in, uh, influence you at all if you're, if you're doing a fast. It'd be more a question of trying it and see if it triggers hunger. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of depends on what you're fasting for. Um, it does not contain any protein and it does not contain any fats. There's a very small amount of carbohydrates in the form of the acacia gum fiber. Mm -hmm. When that gets into your gut, it's going to turn into butyrate thanks to your gut bacteria. So even though it's a carbohydrate, it'll be turned into fat but it won't even actually hit your bloodstream because your gut lining will consume that before it even gets to the blood. Your Pretty cool likes. stuff. So from a calorie standpoint, from a nutrient standpoint, it's not going to break a fast, but the sweetener may trigger you to feel hungry, yeah. which may be problematic for a fast. Try it out, see if it works. Yep. So this is why we created Salty. Thanks so much for joining us. The whole reason we're doing these videos is to answer your questions. So put some questions down below and we will be happy to, questions. to answer them next week. Bye. <laughs>